Hi everyone and welcome to the Threatened Species Initiative and I'm glad that you can join us today and I hope you enjoy this online training course and find it useful. As we're all currently aware, we find ourselves in a biodiversity crisis and one of the key goals of the new global biodiversity framework is to better understand genetic diversity and how do we maintain it within populations as well as uh, to ensure that we safeguard their adaptive potential for the future. Now, managers, conservation managers all know that genetic diversity is important. There's an inverse relationship between genetic diversity and inbreeding. We use it to maintain adaptive potential as well as for future change. And individuals uh, use genetic diversity to maintain their fitness to ensure their long-term survival. Now, back in 2018, we undertook an investigation to understand why genetics was not really being used in conservation management. When we looked at the 200 national vertebrate recovery plans, we found that it was really just traditionally considered a nice to have. And in those 200 vertebrate recovery plans, however, more than 80% of the recovery actions did in fact require some form of genetic action. But when we dug down into it, less than 15% of the species at a national level were using genetic data to inform their recovery actions. And why was this the case? Well, one of the key factors has been access to data. There's been a large number of initiatives recently which have started to sequence all eukaryotic life on Earth as a way of combating the declining global biodiversity crisis we find ourselves in. Most of these are under the umbrella project of the Earth Biogenome Project, but as you can see, there's a range of different logos on there, and there's a really cool tool called Genomes on a Tree. You can Google it, and it'll give you a running uh, synopsis of all the different types of species and taxa that have genetic data being generated for them. What we do find, however, is that there, although there has been a significant increase in genomic resources of late, and as you can see, since 2015, all the way past 2020, there's been a sharp increase in genetic data being deposited on the national data repositories. We do find that it's very unequal uh, amount of data that's being generated and, and an unequal increase in resources. So of the 15 and a half thousand animal species listed as threatened under the IUCN back in 2021, less than 3% of them in fact had genetic resources available to them. So this is where we find ourselves in this bit of a conundrum where you've got genome biologists and geneticists working the way, developing genetic resources, the ecologists and conservation managers sitting on the other side of the divide, pulling their hair out, wondering how on earth they're meant to use this information to apply it to conservation management decisions. And a third problem has now arisen, which is the, if what we call bioinformatics. So how do we, uh, for those who generate the genetic data, you've also got to be able to analyse these very large data sets. And those who work in ecology or managers on the ground need to also understand how they can use that information and apply it in real time to their uh, management decisions. So this is how the threatened species was born. So what is the Threatened Species Initiative? Well, the Threatened Species Initiative is a joint project between uh, the University of Sydney, the West Australian Government at DBCA with Kim Otterwell, uh, Peter Latch at the Department of Environment um, and Bioplatforms Australia. And it's about de developing genomic resources for Australia's threatened species. It's also about generating associated population data for those species. But more importantly, it's about developing an applied conservation genomics portal or an online toolkit for conservation managers. And if you're watching this video today, it means you found the online portal and the toolkit. And what we've tried to do is develop a different series of ways that you can analyze your data, be, have access to the national compute infrastructure and this online training course to help better inform um, and upskill yourself in uh, genetic literacy for conservation management. Now, Bioplatforms Australia has a very large biodiversity initiative. They've been uh, generating genomic resources for a range of different species in Australia. And here's just an example of a few of these projects. And really, uh, there's lot, a large amount of data that is now available on, on the data portal with Bioplatforms. So the steering committee of, of the Threatened Species Initiative consists of myself, Peter Latch at the federal government, Kim Otterwell at the West Australian State Government, Maurizio Rosetto representing the plants from the Royal Botanical Gardens here in Sydney, Andrew Gilbert and Sarah Richmond from Bioplatforms Australia, James G Biggs from the Zoo and Aquarium Association, and Kathy Belov who has expertise in comparative genomics from the University of Sydney. 
So where are we up to? Well, today, which is uh, August 2023, we have 87 species that we're supporting through the TSI projects across 53 projects and about 201 collaborators. And as you can see from the different pie charts here, there are about a third of the species are critically endangered, endangered or vulnerable. We have a couple of extinct in the wild species and a supporting generation of data for some data deficient species or crustaceans here in Australia. The representation of the different taxa is largely proportioned to plants because there's approximately 1,400 plant species that are threatened in Australia compared to the 500 fauna species. And as you can see, a large proportion of those involved in the project come from government agencies or conservation NGOs with uh, only about a third of participants being involved in academia, which is one of the reasons we've uh, developed this program. So I hope you enjoy this online course. Uh, here's a slight overview for it. And as you can imagine, there's a large number of individuals involved in uh, this project, and I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge their contributors. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the program. <laughs> 